Hi guys, it's been a while since my last video. Uh, I'd love to be doing a video on uh, the Camaro today, or my Mustang, but unfortunately uh, both me and Bob have been real busy lately and our schedules haven't meshed up together, so we haven't been able to get much done, uh, well, anything done on the Camaro. So today we're going to do a little video on my 90 Buick LeSabre. It's, uh, I bought it for 500 bucks. It's uh, not the coolest looking car. This 3.8 is pretty good. It's got a lot of rust. May not be driving it for much longer. Well, anyway, problem I got today. is my lock cylinder has seized up. Got nothing. So I'm going to have to take my whole steering column apart and uh, replace that. Alright, to do this job you're going to need a steering wheel puller, a snap ring plier set, and then the uh, steering wheel, wheel uh, lock plate uh, remover. and We'll, you'll see where that comes useful. Also, very useful service manual, especially if you don't not that familiar with taking apart a late model column like this. My Mustang was really easy to take apart. This thing's probably going to be a real pain in the pain in the butt to do. And obviously the uh, replacement part. All right, the first thing you want to do is disconnect the negative battery cable on your car. All right, now we need to pry off the, uh, the horn button or horn cover. come out fairly easy. Just held in by those two little clips there. Alright, now we gotta get that uh, clip off there. Alright, get the... like so. Pull the clip out. Okay, now that we got the clip off, we're gonna take the nut off. And if we're lucky, we can just pull the wheel off. Nope. I have to use the puller. Okay, I got my uh, wheel puller installed. Uh, there's two little threaded uh, holes on the, each side of the, uh, the wheel here. And then you have this long bolt here that pushes against the shaft, and when you tighten this, it pulls the wheel off. like so. Alright, now I got this plastic cover to contend with and it just pops off with the screwdriver. Well, there we go. And now you can see the locking plate. Now to get this off, there's a little clip down here and you gotta push the locking plate down and you guys, and we got, that's what we got that tool there for, so let's get that set up. Okay, with the lock plate compressor in place, now you can see we can get, get at that little ring there. So we'll take that off now. Okay, now you can see we've got the ring past the little groove down there, and now we're going to slowly release the tension with the tool. Okay, I got the tool removed now, and I'll take the lock plate off. Uh, cam off. spring in there. That's what was holding the pressure on the plate there. Okay, looks like we got uh, three screws holding in the turn signal switch. And I'm probably going to have to take that off too. Alright, I removed my hazard switch. It's just one little screw that holds it in. There's a spring and another the external piece out there. So, what actuates the uh, turn signal switch is this little thing right here. And what's interesting is I'm missing a spring here that's for the left-hand turn signal cancel, and that's why my car wouldn't, doesn't cancel when I turn, use a left-hand turn signal, so maybe we'll find a spring in here somewhere. So, All right, so I'm going to remove this screw and then pull this arm out. Okay, I remove the screw, and then this just slides out like that. So now we've got to deal with these screws right here. Okay, three screws are removed from the um, 
turn single switch. Uh, hopefully we can just... Just to calm down if you need more slack. Kind of wires. Okay, there's the lock cylinder. And there is the buzzer switch. So we have to get that out. Okay, uh, I removed the uh, buzzer switch. Just needed a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, now we need that, that black screw there. That's what holds the lock cylinder in. You need a, a T20 to take it out. Torx 20. Okay, the screw's out. Pulled right out. You can see, wow, there's a lot of brass flakes on this. Oh man, wow, look at that. That's from just wearing out the key. Wow. Alright, it's all cleaned out now. Put the new cylinder in. Sweet. Okay, so we don't have any mechanical problem as far as going into start. Alright, let's put the screws back in. Okay, I just reinstalled the buzzer, buzzer switch. And here's a little tip for you guys. Um, here's the bottom of the, the old lock cylinder. See that little white tab there? That's what activates the buzzer switch when you put the key in. Also note, it's not spring tensioned or anything. It could just slip down. And in the, the spring tension in the switch is what actually holds it up. So uh, you might have to use a little screwdriver. It goes in a little slot there. Hold that, push that tab up so you can put this, the the uh, buzzer switch back in. Okay, reinstall the uh, turn signal switch and screw in the three screws. To get to the top screw, make sure that the switch is in the right position so you can get to that top one there. And then we gotta reinstall the little actuator arm here. Alright, this is kinda hard to do one-handed, but I'll try to do it. Okay, and just make sure that the hole's lined up there so you can get the screw in. Okay, our actuator's arm in, our switch moves. Now, I really should get another spring for the left-hand turn signal, but unfortunately the, my local AutoZone doesn't have it in stock, so I'd rather just be able to drive the car and deal with the left-hand turn signal not working. Alright, next thing we gotta do is reinstall the hazard switch. Okay, hazard switch in. So now we put the spring back in. The cam back in. And the lock plate. Okay. Lock plate can only go down on it. Go down on it in a certain way. So now we gotta compress the lock plate again. Make sure you put the uh, snap ring back on before you uh, start putting the tool on. Alright, once you get your snap ring in place, remove the uh, lock plate compressor, and now we can put the wheel back on. Okay, there's a little notch at the top of the, sh uh, the steering wheel and a little notch at the top of the shaft, and you want those to line up. You also want the horn button, uh, horn contact, I should say, uh, to match up. So, once you get that done, push down on the wheel, like I've done here, and then you can uh, reinstall the nut. Screw the nut back on, tighten it up. Alright, reinstall the retainer clip. Okay, last step is we're going to reinstall the horn button. There's a uh, plastic black tube here with a little notch in it holds the uh, wire in and you just push it in and turn it clockwise and that holds it in place so your horn works. And then you just push down on it. There. Wheels back together. Last step, reattach the negative battery cable. Alright, let's give her a try. Uh, gotta love 3.8s. And my car, when it's working. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video useful, if you got to take a column half apart, and hopefully we'll have some more Mustang and uh, Camaro videos soon. <laughs>